In this video, I'm going to share with you how to promote a retreat. And I'm going to share with you ways that you can do it that are a little bit unusual and some of them are a little counterintuitive actually. Let me give you a little overview of what we're going to cover in this video. First, the foundational component of promoting a retreat, no matter what kind of retreat or if it's your first one or your 100th retreat. We're also going to talk about retreat promotions that have low financial risk and don't cost you a whole lot of money and how to promote retreats of all kinds, including yoga retreats, health and wellness retreats, even writing retreats. And then I'm going to tie it together with seven effective retreat promotional strategies, including in-person strategies and also online marketing strategies. So first let's talk about that core foundational thing that I think will support you in promoting your retreats right away and also for years to come. And that is building your audience. Building your audience of warm and engaged followers, people that you are interacting with on a regular basis so that the moment you say, hey, I've got a new retreat, there are already hands in the air of people that want to sign up. One such strategy is what I call a percolator strategy. So much like a coffee pot percolates until the coffee pops up and is, and is ready. That's a type of program whereby you essentially enroll people into some sort of low price point, low risk program that keeps them engaged over time so that when they need something, when they want something, that's something that you deliver ideally in a retreat format, they're ready and eager and willing to sign up. So a percolator program can look like, for example, a $27 a month membership or a $97 a month group coaching program. And then every say quarter, when you create your retreat, you can offer it to those people first, or you can even offer it to them at a special price. Say, Hey, my next retreat is coming up. Who's ready this time to take their progress to the next level. Now let's talk about how to create retreat promotions that are low financial risk. So the first thing I want to share with you is my basic philosophy around business, which is kind of not for everybody. And that is sell it first, figure it out later. So I'm a big proponent, especially when it comes to retreat marketing for you to go out there, promote your retreat, enroll people in it before you even spend a dime planning it. So for example, when I did my very first retreat, instead of focusing on the venue and the amenities and all of the ways that I was going to spend money on the retreat, I first focused on coming up with a really juicy retreat promise. Back in the day, that retreat promise was that you would design your new brand in a weekend. So you'd spend three days with me in a retreat environment and we would nail down your brand positioning, your value statement, your mission statement, your pricing, everything having to do with your branding. We even would shoot headshots right there on site. And so when I created my very first retreat, I didn't get a hotel. I didn't hire the photographer. I didn't start planning the meals that we were going to do at the retreat. Instead, I focused on what were all the outcomes that I was going to promise. And that I knew that if I promised I would deliver. And then I went to everyone in my network that I knew needed that or had expressed interest in getting those things in the past. And I said, Hey, I'm creating this new thing. I'm really excited about, would you like to hop on a call so I can tell you a little bit about it? And let me tell you that most everyone that I asked to hop on a call said yes to getting on the call. And then on the call, I shared my vision. I shared what I was creating and I shared why I had reached out to them based on something they'd said in the past or work we'd done together before. And in several of the cases, they said, you know what? Sign me up. I want to do that. Once I had a group of people big enough that I knew I could at least run the retreat with those people, maybe five or six people. That's when I went and I found my venue. That's when I went and I found my photographer. That's when I went and I started to focus on the production of the event. Once I developed the promise and once I had started to enroll prospects in the retreat. 
So that's what I recommend for, for a retreat marketing strategy. Sell it first, figure it out later. That lowers your financial risk and raises the pressure on you to make sure that you deliver at the highest level. And one of the cool things about that strategy is it meant that everybody that I enrolled gave me ideas about things that I could include in the retreat that I hadn't even thought of before. So now let's talk about how to promote different types of retreats and what makes them different and what might differentiate their marketing and promotional strategies. So the first type of retreat that I hear about a lot and the kind of retreat that I like to attend a lot is a yoga retreat. So obviously a yoga retreat, you want to have yoga enthusiasts attend your retreat. So ideally you'd have people that are more or less at the same level, right? You don't want to have an absolute never ever beginner next to an absolute totally advanced yogi, right? You want to kind of differentiate based on skill level. Now, one way to do that is by promoting your retreat through yoga classes. So if you're a yoga teacher and you're teaching classes, then start to orient your classes around the types of people that you want to attend your retreat. So for example, if you want to do a retreat with advanced superstar yogis, start to teach more advanced superstar yoga classes. And then after every single class mention, Hey, don't talk about your one retreat. I'm doing a retreat on these dates. Well, I'm not saying that you don't mention that at all, but what I would do instead is that I would let people know after every class forever and ever that you have retreats, that you have advanced workshops, that you have specialty things that you do. And if they ever want to hear about those to enroll in your community, to, to sign up for your email list or your newsletter or whatever it is, that way you're not promoting one retreat at a time, but rather you're promoting you're pulling together an audience of engaged people that are always potentially up for your next retreat. Another type of retreat that I get a lot of questions about is a church retreat. Similar to the yoga retreat, what you want is to have an engaged audience of people who are always ready for your next retreat. That means a congregation or an audience of people who you already have been working with and already have been leading, who already know you, like you, and trust you. So actually with every type of retreat, this is the foundation, build the audience first. And then the retreats are just one more thing that you provide that audience, one more way that you deliver value to that audience. So with a church, finding your congregation, getting in there, connecting with the pastor or the priest or whomever is leading that church and seeing if they'll endorse your retreat, if they will participate in it somehow and they will lend their credibility to, to your retreat and to your opportunity. Another type of retreat that I get a lot of questions about is something having to do with a hobby or a craft. This is one of my, the most interesting types of retreats that I've seen because People who are interested in a hobby or craft can sometimes be a little bit fanatical about that hobby or craft. For that reason, I think one great way to promote that kind of retreat is to first create some sort of association or organization that brings these people together and then offer your retreat inside of that organization or association. So I have a client, for example, who's or two clients, really, they work together who are interested in Mahjong and actually specifically they're focused on Mahjong instructors. Now Mahjong is a table game played with tiles that mostly women play around the world. And so what they've created is a Mahjong instructors association. And then now that they've created that, they're going to start offering retreats and an annual conference to those instructors. Now that they have that community built, it'll be a lot easier to fill up their events. If this is exciting for you and you like the idea of running, promoting, marketing a retreat, then please subscribe to my channel and also you can check out my retreat business playlist. I have a whole bunch of different videos all about different ways to market, promote, and sell your retreats. Let's talk also about how to promote a wellness retreat. Now here's the thing. So many times the word retreat is already associated with wellness because it lends itself perfectly to that industry. The problem with that is that it's become a little bit 
commoditized, meaning they're not very differentiated. So my best advice for you for promoting a wellness retreat is to differentiate based on the specific interests rather than a generic, you know, Hey, here's a lifestyle wellness five day retreat in this beach town. Instead, focus it in on something like acupuncture or hypnosis or uh, chiropractic or stretching or pick something specific that people already have an interest in so that you can go find pockets of people with that interest, both online and in associations and organizations, and then market to that specific niche. Writing retreats are actually some of my most favorite retreats. And so how you can promote a writing retreat is to get involved in writing groups. There are millions, maybe not millions, uh, many writing groups on LinkedIn and on Facebook. And my advice would be to join those groups in advance. Don't join them 20 days before your retreat and then start promoting your retreat, but rather join them in advance and become an active member, become someone who's known for delivering great ideas, great advice, and great value, and then bring them into your own group. So again, the whole idea is to create your own little percolator where you can gather people together and keep them engaged until they're ready to pop up into your retreat. So here are my top seven ways to promote a retreat. And I'm going to split these up into, um, offline or generic ways that you can do both online or offline. And then I'm going to focus specifically on just online ways. So the first is affiliate promotions. So affiliate promotions means partnering with people who have your audience. So let's say we're talking about a yoga retreat. So you might partner with a yoga studio that can be your affiliate. Now that yoga studio can promote your retreat to their members. And in exchange for anyone that signs up, you can give them a, an affiliate fee or an affiliate commission. And you can go around and do that to, with multiple groups and organizations. So that's a great, great way of having someone else market and promote your retreat for you. It's less work for you, but it also means less money because you have to pay out that affiliate commission. The second strategy that I love is called a storm starter strategy. Now I cannot take credit for this one. This is from my mentor, Mark LeBlanc. And a storm starter strategy essentially just means reaching out to people one at a time via phone or text, not so much email and just checking in and saying, Hey, I've got something new that I've put together and I think you'd love it. Can we chat? And then just hopping on a call, checking in with that person and seeing if there's an opportunity to tell them more about your retreat or event. It's called a storm starter because if you do this a little bit every day, one or two calls a day, it adds up over time and eventually it starts to create a storm of opportunities. My third strategy, and I guess the one that I enjoy the most is speaking. Speaking as a strategy to fill your retreats is not necessarily a direct strategy because, well, at least for me as a professional speaker, because I do speak professionally and I have a retreat and coaching business. Most of the time as a professional speaker, I can't or don't want to get up on a stage, deliver my speech, and then do a big old sales pitch. So instead, the way that I connect my speaking with my retreat promotions is that at the end of my speaking, I simply ask everybody in the room, so who'd like to go deeper on this topic? Who'd like to do more? Who'd like to potentially work with me? And then usually a whole bunch of hands go up and then I invite those people to come and bring me their cards and write F U on the card, which means follow up. And then I set up a meaningful conversation. I think I've said this before. I probably have said this a million times. The best way to sell a retreat, the best way to enroll people in it is to do it over the phone, one-on-one -on -one, or on zoom. Not a big believer in trying to sell people from the stage or have landing pages that enroll people into my retreats. Why? Because it's so important to get the right people in the room. With a retreat, just one bad apple can spoil the bunch. So we want to make sure that we get the very best people in there. And the best way to do that is through a conversation. So that's why when I'm speaking, I'm not pitching my retreat. I'm just pitching the opportunity to get to know each other better. And then the fourth offline way of enrolling people in a retreat 
is through preview events. Are basically short events. So if a retreat is say three days, a preview event might be 90 minutes where basically you give people an overview of the content that they need to see and understand in order to want your retreat. So for example, when I started doing retreats, remember I mentioned that my retreats were branding retreats. And so at my initial retreats, we did positioning, pricing, branding. So my preview events laid out all the essential components of a brand. And then at the end I would say, Hey, does anybody want to go deeper? Does anybody actually want me to help them with their personal brand? Anybody? And people's hands would go up and I'd say, great, then stick around after this event, come over, meet me in the back of the room. And I'll tell you about my three day personal branding retreat where we'll map all of this out with you. So now let's talk about the three online strategies for you to promote your retreats. The first, well, you're looking at it is YouTube marketing. I am a huge fan of YouTube because it's free and all you have to do is put out great content and then invite people to either check out your retreat landing page or sign up for a meaningful conversation. And you can drive a whole lot of traffic just by being really strategic about the titles of your videos. Now I'm not going to get deep into this content, but I do have a video about how to create great YouTube marketing videos. And actually I learned it from the guy who produces my videos with his name is Nate Woodbury and he has amazing videos on this topic as well. Now let's get into number six. Number six is webinars. Now webinars are very similar to preview events. In fact, I used to do preview events and then when COVID happened, I had to switch to webinars and now I love webinars. So I am going to plan to stay with them even when we can do preview events again, but webinars are essentially your preview event delivered through zoom or webinar jam or go to webinar, something like that. The only difference between webinars and preview events is that the webinars are delivered online. And then the final way to promote your retreats online is through a funnel. Now, I use a funnel for pretty much everything, but the big distinction that I want to get across to you is that I don't use a funnel to actually sell the retreat. I don't say, you know, here's my landing page and then here's a big old sales page and click this button to register for my retreat. It just doesn't work that well because my retreat, like I advocate for you is a fairly high price point and it's a fairly big risk and commitment on both of our sides. I can't risk to have a not right fit person in the room. So the difference between my funnel and a lot of sales funnels out there is that my funnel is always looking to get people onto a strategy session. And so strategy session is basically a meaningful conversation. Remember what Mark LeBlanc says that all roads lead to a meaningful conversation. And on that meaningful conversation, we decide together if the retreat is a right fit. If you're interested in creating and producing and hosting amazing transformational retreats that also generate nice income for you, then let's connect. You can book time with me or someone on my team to learn about how we can support you in building out your retreat business by going to superstardiscoverycall.com, superstardiscoverycall.com, or just click on the link below. Hope to see you soon.